at eurolexhome.com. We have decided to start a series of videos describing all of the different European antique furniture styles that we carry. Uh, if you are interested in history and antiques, I think you'll love this series. So be sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Behind me is a late 19th century Gothic buffet. So today we're going to talk about the Gothic style, how it originated, and then we'll talk more about the different hallmarks of the Gothic style so that perhaps you can identify pieces when you're out on an antique search. So to begin with, I'd like to just express the fact that architecture, art, decorative arts are a reflection of society's values. So it's important to have an understanding of what's going on in society in order to really fully appreciate and understand the decoration that you see on antique furniture. So if we go way back in time to the 12th century, back in the Middle Ages, what was really prominent in society was a focus on Christianity. It's what we call a theocentric universe, one focused on God and religion. And that was what the common man spent most of his time was thinking about God. Uh, the church was very prominent. And uh, that was just what permeated throughout society. So it's natural then that we see a reflection of that theocentric universe in the artistic expression that happened at that time. And of course, what comes to mind in the Middle Ages is probably the Gothic cathedral. The most famous Gothic cathedral is probably Notre Dame in Paris. And you may be very familiar with what that looks like. The However, the first Gothic cathedral that was developed or built um, is Saint-Denis, and that's just outside of Paris. It was under the guidance of Abbot Suget. I believe it was finished around 1144. And this uh, building of a Gothic cathedral was meant to be able to build a much higher church, a much higher cathedral than had ever been built before. And the purpose of that was to bring your eye to heaven, to bring your eye to thinking about God and religion, that upward uh, verticality that then will be reflected in the Gothic style was first prominent in the Gothic cathedral. And there were several combinations of elements that allowed builders to create these great big, huge Gothic cathedrals. And that includes pointed arches, ribbed vaults, and flying buttresses. That allowed the builders to build very high, much higher than it had ever been, and it also allowed them to put in huge stained glass windows so that as the light came in through the windows, it really created this almost mystical experience for the people when they came inside the church. And you have to remember that back in the 12th century, the, the common people were illiterate. They could not read or write, and all of the church theology was in Latin. And so they counted on the priests and the church to give them the stories so that then when they entered and walked into a Gothic cathedral, it was like they were walking into the Bible in stone and glass. The Bible stories were expressed in the stained glass windows, the light coming in, making these jeweled patterns on the floor as the light moved during the day. It really was a religious experience for the common man to come into the Gothic cathedral back at this time. So as the Gothic style then develops through the 13th and 14th century, it becomes even more ornate uh, and we see more details that happen on the style. It begins to spread across Europe and each country sort of develops their own um, expression of the Gothic style, but it did originate in France. By the 15th and 16th century, we do see a waning of the Gothic style because we see the rise of the Renaissance style, and we'll do another video about that. Um, but by the 19th century, 
after uh, the Gothic style had sort of waned and fallen out of favor, by the 19th century, we have a resurgence. Throughout history, we see this pendulum swing back and forth from an interest in, in a style, then uh, moving away from the style, and then back to the style. So by the late 19th century, we have the rise of Romanticism. And Romanticism is a focus on otherworldliness of imagination, of emotion. Um, there's a nostalgic element to Romanticism. And as that philosophy spreads throughout Europe, we begin to see this move back to this idea of an otherworldly spiritual um, style that evokes imagination. And that's when we see the rise of the Gothic revival style in the late 19th century, which is the age of this piece. Now, Romanticism, besides being a focus on this imagination and emotion, it's also a reaction against the rise of the Industrial Revolution. Um, at that time, in mid-19th century, as the Industrial Revolution rises, there becomes a greater focus on machines, on machine-made, mass-produced things, and it gets to a point where almost like in our society today, there's a new focus, a new interest in handcrafted things. People want to turn away from having just a mass produced thing. And instead they want to be able to see the craftsmanship, the, the handwork that is unusual. And that fuels this resurgence of the Gothic revival style. So that's the history of the style. And all of that was necessary for you to understand then the hallmarks that are expressed in the style. So we'll now talk about those hallmarks as we move from piece to piece so that you can see it for yourself. So to recap, the Gothic style is based on this underlying philosophical view of the 12th century of a theocentric universe where the focus of life is on God, on the afterlife, on otherworldly things. And that becomes reflected in the style of the decorative arts that are produced. So here we have a fantastic pair of Gothic thrones. And the first hallmark that you'll notice on the style is this focus on verticality, of bringing your eye up. Uh, many of the Gothic pieces have a great big height that's bringing the focus up. Most of the Gothic pieces are carved in solid oak, as this piece is, and is often done in a very dark finish, making it just look very rich and regal. Uh, and we find those elements that enable the building of the Gothic cathedrals, the pointed arch, the ribbed vaults, and the flying buttresses on pieces in the Gothic style. So on these chairs right here, we find our pointed arch. And then we also find the elaborate carvings. And these carvings actually look like stained glass windows. This is called tracery. Um, and as you come down, you'll see this tracery pattern of things that would look like it was carved right there in Gothic windows, but carved in wood. Even here across the top, we see these patterns. And even the top of the chair looks as if it's a spire of a Gothic cathedral, coming down another spire and a twisted column. And another element of the Gothic style is uh, religious motifs. Sometimes you actually see little carved monk's faces. Here we do have a carved knight right in the middle of the panel. And then we also have a motif called linen fold, which we'll find right here on the edge of this, where it looks like the folds of linen. And that evokes this sense of draperies or linens that were used on the high altar in the Gothic cathedrals. So coming right around here, we have another phenomenal example of late 19th century Gothic revival buffet. The verticality, of course, brings your eyes straight up. And even at the top, it looks like the spires 
of a Gothic cathedral. We have the ornate tracery across the top, and then coming down, we have these huge, great big windows. Now, these aren't colored glass, uh, but this is leaded glass, original leaded glass windows. At the top, we see the pointed arch, but then on the inside, we see this second arch, and that's actually called an OG arch, which is often uh, found in the Gothic style. And that's a double arch, is the OG arch. Uh, and it has that interesting kind of curved shape. We, on this piece, actually here have this stylized idea of the flying buttresses. So flying buttresses are exterior supports on the outside of the cathedral that helped distribute the weight, which allowed the builders to then build the cathedrals even higher to accommodate these great big huge glass windows. And so here on this piece, we actually have a stylized flying buttress as part of the Gothic style. We have lots of ornate carvings here on the doors, but on this piece, I especially love these gargoyles. Now, you may have seen, for instance, on Notre Dame in Paris, the rain spouts on the Gothic cathedrals are little gargoyles, or you find them um, within the Gothic cathedral in little places around the church. Um, and so we actually have these gargoyles um, here on this piece, and I find that particularly interesting. So let's go and we'll look at a few more pieces. So as you come through here, right around the corner, your eye opens up into this another phenomenal, huge Gothic Revival Buffet. Um, it is just a beautiful piece. Going all the way up to the top, you have the ornate tracery, the ornate arches. So you see those pointed arches at the top. But if you look on the inside, can you see that there's actually a ribbed vault? And that's yet another of that architectural element that helped distribute the weight on the inside of the roof on the arch, the vault of the Gothic cathedrals, they would put these ribbed vaults so that it helped distribute the weight and then it was further distributed out to the flying buttresses to allow that huge verticality that we find on these pieces. Uh, of course, we have these great big windows. We have the pointed arch here sitting on top of little uh, columns and the glass itself is actually beveled and really sparkles. It's just a phenomenal, beautiful piece. As you come down here, we have more details. And this little sort of clover shape here is actually what's called a quatrefoil. That's very common on um, shape in the Gothic style. Sometimes you'll have what's called a trefoil, where it's three, a three clover, and this one is the four clover, the quatrefoil. Um, so lots of elements here as we come down, we see that this is actually a heraldic crest of an aristocratic family that this may have been made for um, or was meant to be stylized um, as part of a family, that history. And then behind it is the idea, the stylized idea of the tracery, the Gothic windows. So it's not just great big buffets, though, that we find the Gothic style. We have actually lots of dining room chairs. Uh, this is a particularly beautiful set. We actually have 10 of these chairs with the original embossed leather here on the back. We have that quatrefoil shape here at the top, the pointed arch with a double arch on the inside, that OG arch. And then coming over to this one, you really see that pointed arch here, a column. And here is our trefoil motif, the three clovers rather than the four clovers. Just a really great way to bring the Gothic style into your own home. As we come over to this piece, this is just phenomenal. And as you really soak in the high quality details of this piece, I think you'll understand why the late 19th century um, had this turning away from the Industrial Revolution and a greater focus back on craftsmanship and handworking, um, the handcrafted nature of artisanship, 
Because here, if, if as, as you start to really sit and enjoy and look at a piece like this, you'll notice that this door, the pattern on this door, is actually different from the pattern on this door. So the artist took his time and created different patterns, yet it's all cohesive and comes together. So we really here in the center have this very ornate tracery pattern. Um, yet underlying you see this quatrefoil shape and here we have the spires of a cathedral and the hardware this is a hinge all of that's in metal it's all handmade and coming down here and the hardware again all handcrafted just phenomenal the details are just particularly beautiful um, so finding, again, all of these elements, the very detailed, uh, ornate work in the Gothic style. Uh, right here we have, it's not all great big pieces. We do have a low sideboard in the Gothic style. And then coming through here, uh, you'll see that we do actually carry some hall trees. So different shapes of furniture in the Gothic style. I particularly love this one. We have like a canopy and we have again that tracery at the top. You can even imagine the very top looks like the spire of a Gothic cathedral coming down. We still have the tracery behind the stylized Gothic windows. Here's our quatrefoil design. Uh, we even have a tray foil right here. And then the, the hooks on the piece are all hand turned wrought iron. Again, that focus on artisanship, on handcrafted nature. Um, just a beautiful piece. And we even have the linen fold here across the base. So incorporating all of those hallmarks of the Gothic style. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed learning more about the Gothic style. And if you did, please share this video with a friend that might also enjoy learning about the style of European antique furniture. If I can answer any additional questions for you, please leave them in the comments below. Remember to like our video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really helps a small business. Thanks so much.